Good evening, everyone. Everything in this wicked world is not as it appears. Personally, I don't believe everything that I hear on the mainstream news media, especially in the West. I go to various news media outlets that are not within the United States. Here's a message that I believe that everyone needs to listen to. Check this out. If you could address them, what would be your message to the Israeli people? You know, uh, in the Muslim and the Arab world, we sort of have been taking it as a truism, you know, for years that the United States basically serves Israel, that America is controlled by Zionists, and that the U.S. government will do anything, uh, no matter how much it costs, to save and protect Israel. I think there's a lot of Israelis who probably think that way too. But an objective, uh, rational assessment uh, of the situation would paint a very different picture. I think Israelis need to recognize, if they don't already, uh, that the United States is not your savior. It's your worst enemy. The U.S., whether you know it or not, and whether Muslims understand it or not, is actually treating Israel the same way that they treat everyone else, with complete contempt. I mean, look, uh, they are supporting Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the most unpopular, the most despised, the most corrupt, the most incompetent, the most psychopathic, delusional, uh, and despotic ruler that Israel has ever had. And he's responsible for both prolonging and worsening the conflict with the Palestinians. Netanyahu has made a career uh, on diverting attention away from the uh, internal domestic concerns that actually matter uh, to Israeli citizens, that matter the most to Israeli citizens, by endlessly talking about security and the supposed threat uh, that Israel faces. And of course, uh, the domestic problems in Israel just get worse. And the uh, conflict and the security situation actually just gets worse. And America loves it. They don't care about Israel's domestic issues. They don't care about the uh, socioeconomic issues, the socioeconomic concerns that Israelis have, the high cost of living, the disparity between rich and poor. Uh, they don't care about corruption uh, in Israeli society and so on. And these are the, uh, predominantly, these are the issues that matter the most to Israeli citizens, to American vote, uh, to uh, Israeli voters. But as far as America is concerned, the only thing that matters is continuing the strife and conflict. That's all they care about. They don't care about the welfare and the stability of Israel, the safety of Israeli citizens. You see, Israeli citizens want to treat Israel like an actual country, and they expect it to behave like an actual country. And they think that uh, their lives and their concerns should matter like they would in an actual country. But to the United States, Israel is a policy instrument. So the Israeli population doesn't matter to them. And what matters to the Israeli population doesn't matter to them. The relationship with the United States uh, has been incredibly detrimental to Israel, despite what everyone thinks. It has prevented Israel from becoming a normal society. Now, part of that is driven by the uh, by diaspora Jews in the U.S., who, like most uh, diaspora communities, are generally far more radical and ideological than their people back home. And this diaspora community in the West, particularly in the United States, uh, makes a huge amount of money exploiting uh, Jewish emotional attachment to Israel, you know, getting them to fund pro-Israeli lobbies and so on, which mostly just uh, makes a handful of American Jews very rich. But it's mostly driven by U.S. policy interests and the utility of Israel uh, as a vehicle for an endless flow of cash to American defense companies and as a uh, sort of offshore research and development hub for the Pentagon. The U.S. does not want uh, and has never wanted for Israel to be at peace with their neighbors. They've never wanted Israel to integrate into the region. That's not Israel's function as far as America is concerned. And it doesn't matter to them that this is the only way for Israel to ever actually become uh, a normal society. It doesn't matter if this is 
uh, in the interests of the Israeli population or not. They don't care. They're using you. They're using you, the Israelis. They're exploiting you. The Americans, the West, are using you. And it's absolutely against the interests of your people. Obviously, the only way for Israel to ever progress as a society is to dislodge themselves from the United States, from the West, and to integrate properly into the region. Until they do that, uh, none of their domestic issues will ever be resolved. They'll never even be addressed. Until they do that, uh, they will never be allowed to do anything but uh, be a policy tool of the U.S. and lose both their lives and their souls in the process. I mean, they're making you do things that are against your beliefs as Jews. They're making you do things that are against your own humanity. They're pushing you to do things that make the world see you as monsters. And more specifically, uh, you're being seen as monsters by the people who are in that part of the world where you are. Properly, uh, Israel should be a global south country. It should be a Middle Eastern country. And it should uh, share the values and the priorities of the global south and the Middle East. But because it was uh, a Western colonialist project from the beginning, and because it continues to operate exclusively as a colonialist project, it is seen as, it is perceived as, and it sees itself as a Western nation. And you're never going to be able to be a normal country uh, going forward like that. The only real way forward uh, is a one-state solution. Incorporate all of the occupied territories and all of the inhabitants of those territories into one country with equal citizenship rights. Yes, that will mean that uh, Israel will have a Palestinian majority and it will no longer be a so-called Jewish state, but it can become a normal, healthy society. I mean, if Zionism means upholding the right of Jews to live in Palestine, well, no one ever said they didn't have that right. No one ever had a problem with that, certainly not the Muslims. But if Zionism means uh, ethnic Jewish supremacy, well, I mean, what civilized person would endorse something like that in the 21st century? There were always Jews in Palestine during the Muslim Empire. And there were Jews in Palestine when the Zionists came, and the Zionists fought against them. But if you want your country to ever be normal, then you're going to have to go back in history and learn from the history of those uh, Palestinian Jews who knew how to get along with their neighbors and who lived peacefully with the Arabs, who lived peacefully with the Palestinians, the Jews who rightly saw uh, the Zionists as colonizers and as people who disrupted their society, because those same Zionists and that same ideology is disrupting your society today. The Israelis can't possibly like being the way their country is now. There's no way they like that. They're human beings. They hate Netanyahu. And most of them blame the government for what's going on right now, and rightly so. But look how opposed that is to the American narrative. You know, look at how at odds the American narrative is from the way Israelis themselves feel, the Western narrative. You need to stop letting America talk for you. They're destroying you. The perspective of the average Israeli uh, is diametrically the opposite of what the Americans are saying. I mean, look at those kids at the rave when the Hamas attack happened. And remember that uh, military service is compulsory in Israel. So that means that all of those kids at that rave were IDF soldiers at one point. And all those kids have military training, but those aren't soldiers. I mean, even the active soldiers of the IDF aren't soldiers. The IDF of 2023 is not the IDF of 1956 or 1967 or even of the, of the 1980s. These people don't want to be warriors. They just want to live their lives. But America won't let them. I mean, look at the Israelis on... TikTok or Instagram? What do you think they would rather be doing with their lives? Do you think they have it in them to, uh, that they're so committed to Zionism that they want to dedicate their lives to harsh, uh, stoic drills and training all day, self-sacrifice, discipline, and so on, in order to make Israel a warrior nation? Well, they'd rather be in Dubai. You know it and I know it. If they had a choice between uh, the path that Netanyahu and the United States wants for them, which is the path of 
endless strife and conflict and bloodshed. If they had a choice between that or uh, following the path of a one-state solution that would flood that country with Gulf investment, Gulf money, and would allow them to just basically lay on the beach all day smoking hashish, what do you think they would prefer? No, Israel has to detach itself from the U.S. They need to start looking uh, to the BRICS nations for diplomatic resolutions and solve these problems together with the Global South. And they need to send this message uh, to the diaspora and try to de-radicalize those people and stop the influx of crazy settler extremists to their country. That's a destabilizing force in your society. I mean, just like always, the Muslims, the Arabs, uh, are giving Jews a way out of Western exploitation and violence because that's all the West is doing. If you think about it, if you think it through, you can't possibly be foolish enough not to see that. I mean, we've always heard about how smart Jewish people are. So surely you can see that the West is just uh, throwing you into violence and suffering and chaos. They're just using you. But the Arabs, the Muslims, genuinely want peace and stability, but with justice and fairness. You believe in justice and fairness, don't you? You want peace and stability, don't you? Well, the only way that's ever going to be brought about uh, is when you disentangle yourselves from the United States, honestly. I think you should enact a law in Israel, in fact, against dual citizenship. Don't let anyone be a citizen of Israel while still holding a passport for another country. Then you can weed out, you know, who's really invested in your society and who isn't. I think at least 20% of Israelis, last time I checked, I think around 20% of Israelis uh, hold dual citizenship. And about half of those only live in Israel part-time. They're seasonal Zionists. And these are most likely going to be, uh, you know, the settler types who are basically sort of a, a Jewish ISIS, a Jewish Daesh. You don't want people like that in your society. I mean, it will also be from, from the, the part-time seasonal Zionists. You also have the business people who have divided interests. You need to weed those people out. They're destabilizing. And you certainly shouldn't be allowed to uh, serve in the government if you have dual citizenship. How can you, how can, how can you be sure uh, which country's interests they're serving? Particularly if they're uh, American Israelis, if they hold dual citizenship of Israel and, and the United States, which country are they serving? I mean, how many of these people in the government or elsewhere, but especially in the government, how many of these people will be willing to sacrifice their U.S. passport for Israel? Not many. I promise you that. Well, that shows divided loyalty. And that's at least one of the reasons why there's so much corruption in your government. Because most of the people uh, are serving American interests. Most of the politicians are serving American interests, European interests. Why well, you and I know that uh, Netanyahu is about 95% more likely to retire in, in uh, Florida than in Israel. So if you can get people who are actually committed to uh, Israel being a proper, normal country, people who are genuinely interested in the welfare of the Israeli people, uh, why well, I think you would see peace a lot sooner. And that's obviously in the best interests of Israel. So you need to get closer to the Arabs. You need to get closer to the Muslims and liberate yourselves from being nothing but an American tool in the Middle East, because that's what you are. And that's what they're treating you as. I mean, haven't you ever noticed uh, that the most enthusiastic supporters of Zionism in the West and in the United States among non-Jews are exactly the, the, uh, those same groups of people who historically have been the most anti-Semitic people? While the original Zionists got support from the most Jewish-hating segments of Europe back in the day. Everyone knows that. That's not a secret. And they haven't changed. The Westerners haven't changed. Those same anti-Semitic groups haven't changed. They're just the way they've always been. They supported Zionism uh, back then because they wanted Jews to be anywhere else but next to them. And they feel the same way today. And their so-called support for Israel right now is just as anti-Semitic as it has always been. They want to see you in conflict. They want to see you in misery. They want to see you in insecurity. And they want you to be dependent and subject. It's nothing but hate. But you fooled yourselves into thinking it's love. You fooled yourselves into thinking it's friendship when they're your worst enemy. They're the same people who persecuted you for centuries. And they're persecuting you right now. Just doing it more cleverly. And the same people who were historically the most welcoming to you. And the most kind to you. Are the same people that they want you to be at war with. I'm telling you, you're getting played. 
You should be smarter than that. They don't want good for you. They never did. I mean, what good have you gotten, actually? Hundreds of thousands of your sons and daughters right now have been called up to go to the slaughter by America and their sponsored agents in your government. Hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent only to make you more insecure and line the pockets of your corrupt politicians while average Israelis are struggling with the cost of living and no one cares. Your politicians don't care and who they work for doesn't care, which is the United States. They hate you and they hate us. You and I both know it. We should more or less be on the same side, but they keep making you do things that make it impossible for us to side with you. And that's the whole trick, and you keep falling for it. We don't have a problem with Jews. We never did. Muslims don't have a problem with Jews, and history attests to that fact. Divide and but conquer. We do have a problem with Jews uh, are the biggest backers of Zionism, and we do have a problem with Zionism. And you should, too, because it's a plot that's against you and not for you. If you think about it, they're tricking you in every which way. The U.S. didn't defeat the Nazis and liberate the concentration camps. The Russia Russians did, did that. that. Some of the biggest backers of the Nazis were in America. And after the war, they brought over all the top Nazis in Operation Paperclip. And you know it. They brought them over after the war to help them in their science and engineering and development and so on. Everyone knows that. And right now, uh, they're backing an army uh, in Ukraine who literally fly the swastika fighting against the country that ended the Holocaust, and you're supporting them. You see how confused you are? Don't you see how they've never changed? How the West has never changed? Don't you see uh, how they want you to be against anyone who ever gave you refuge, anyone who was ever decent to you? And you still think this is support? You still think this is love? You think this is friendship? They're using you and they're ruining you because they never stopped being anti-Semitic. That's the truth. They never stop being anti-Semitic. So my message to uh, Israelis would be, stop being led by the nose by anti-Semites and actually make peace with the Semites, with the Arabs, with the Muslims, and get yourselves free once and for all from the United States, from Europe, and from uh, Zionist anti-Semitic manipulation, because it's going to be the death of your country. It's going to be the death of your society. And like I said, it's going to be the death of your souls. Because in order for you to do what the United States wants you to do, you have to do things that are against your belief system. You have to do things that are against your morality. You have to do things that are against your own sense of humanity. And it's going to destroy your reputation. And it is destroying your reputation all across the world and more importantly across the global south, which is where the future is. So you need to stop uh, being manipulated by the West. You need to stop being manipulated by the United States and stop being manipulated by the people who are taking money from the United States and lining their pockets with it. They're sacrificing your children, they're sacrificing your sons and daughters, they're sacrificing your quality of life, and they're sacrificing your future just to line their pockets. Everybody knows that uh, Netanyahu is doing nothing now but trying to save his political career no matter how many lives have to be lost, Palestinian lives or Israeli lives. He doesn't care and neither does America. So you need to wake up and start using that great brain uh, that we all keep hearing about. I thought that was a very interesting presentation. It made perfect sense to me. For many years, even when I was in the military, I saw lots of things and questioned things internally and wondered, why are we doing this? This doesn't make sense. This should make sense to all persons. What this individual said should make sense to all reasonable persons. Now, if you are blind and prejudiced, shut off, closed-minded, this isn't going to make sense to you because this is not what you want to hear. But God has given us a brain. He's given us a mind to weigh, decide, and conclude for ourselves. All we have to do is be quiet and listen. This is R. Jerome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.